Southeast Ohio, it's there's so many people there that, that don't have a lot. And I'm up here for all those kids in Athens. And you guys can be up here too. Joe Burrow is the real deal. And here comes Joe Burrow. Gun! Losing isn't something that you're used to. When they brought you in, you're going to be the savior of this. You're going to save this organization. Is that pressure that you like? I, mean, I think pressure is more of an, an outside word that people use. If you don't let the environment and if you don't let the situation get to you, there's, there's no pressure. It's just a matter of how you perform. Joe Burrow got sacked nine times and still that's what I saw and that's what I see when I watch Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to do it. And there ain't a damn thing you can do about it. I just work really, really hard every day, and I think you know that probably rubs off on people. Um, but I, I'm just myself, and I'm unapologetically myself, and I think that's a good thing, and I think people really respect that. Joe Burrow on April 20th, 2020. Two of the best quarterbacks in NFL history are named Joe. They have both claimed a college football title and a Super Bowl win, Joe Namath and Joe Montana. These two guys are cool in their own way. Joe Namath with fur coats frolicking in fancy seafood restaurants, and Joe Montana ever so cool under pressure, and now rocking his orthopedic sketchers. But there is a new Joe in town, and this Joe has taken the sports world by storm. He is Joe Burrow, a 25-year-old NFL quarterback who is one win away from doing what no quarterback has done before. If Joe Burrow leads his team to a win in the Super Bowl, he would not only become the first Joe, but the first player ever to win the Heisman Trophy, win the college football championship, and win a Lombardi. If he is dancing in confetti on February 13th, he will have completed all three feats in three short years as well, as he is only in his second season as a NFL quarterback. The thing about Joe Burrow is he's not just cool, but as cold as ice, not only with his drip, but the way he plays the game of football. But the way Joe Burrow got here is even more impressive because there was a point where it seemed like Joe Burrow would never be able to play professional football. When you head into Athens County, just two hours short from where NFL greats are immortalized in Canton, in this small town, they already play homage to their own football hero. On a sign that welcomes you to the Plains, Ohio, underneath it proudly lists it as the home of none other than Joe Burrow. The Plains is humble town full of poverty but overflowing with pride under the Friday night lights or whenever number nine takes the field. The halls of Athens High School are lined with photos of Joe Burrow in action from the rafters banners hang from the four years he led the high school football team and in this southern eastern Ohio town of a little over 3,000, the high school football stadium has already been renamed after him. Down the road, the western omelet at Gigi's Country Kitchen is now called The Burrow. In high school, Joe Burrow passed for 11,416 passing yards with 157 touchdowns. He rushed for 2,067 yards and 27 touchdowns via his feet while leading his team to a 14-1 record, that only loss being in the state championship game. From the minute he started playing peewee football, he studied both sides of the ball as his father, Jim, has spent the last 40 years calling defensive schemes mostly at the collegiate level. The borough name translates to athlete, and not just in the state of Ohio. Joe's uncle was a football player at Ole Miss. Straight back. Intercepted. Nobody there but number 26, Johnny Burrow. Joe's grandmother once put up 82 points in a high school basketball game in the Deep South. Joe was an all-state basketball player as well and still thinks he could score a dozen points if inserted into a NBA lineup. 
Joe's father and his older brothers played defense at the University of Nebraska, where Joe, as a five-year-old, sat in the stands of the Rose Bowl, watching the Huskers lose to the Hurricanes in the national championship game in 2002. There was hope that Joe Burrow would follow in his father's and brother's footsteps and also play at the University of Nebraska. The youngest Burrow, who thrived on offense and was voted Mr. Football in Ohio, was a four-star recruit who was rated the number eight dual-threat quarterback in the country. Yet, Nebraska didn't want him. Ohio State, who likes to overload their quarterback depth chart, made Joe Burrow an offer to join the Buckeyes as part of their 2015 recruiting class. His freshman year in Columbus, he redshirted, and then for the next two seasons, he saw limited action. In 2017, Joe Burrow would break his hand, and once he was fully healed in spring practices leading up to the 2018 fall season, coach Urban Meyer was overheard in practice, giving Joe Burrow a hard time, saying things like he needed more velocity, telling him that he was a Division III quarterback, and even making comments that he threw like a girl. Burrow was vying for the starting quarterback job, but lost out to Dwayne Haskins. After throwing his final pass for Ohio State at the 2018 spring game and probably having enough of Urban Meyer, Joe Burrow decided to transfer. Being lured away from the University of Cincinnati to suit up for a team in one of the toughest conferences in college football, LSU. Burrow's next step would be to become the Tigers' starting quarterback. Former Ohio State head coach Urban Meyer, who was a jerk to Burrow behind closed doors, said this in front of the audience after Joe Burrow had transferred. Joe Burrow was a made player. He came in and had a lot of work to do, and he did it. He knows that. I know that. He's ready to go play college football. He's ready to go play. He's earned that right. That's why I think LSU fans should be very excited. He's got a lot of tools. The most important tool is competitive spirit and toughness and that he can get the ball out. He's worked so hard on his release and arm strength. He's mobile enough to keep them honest. He's certainly not a JT Barrett, but he can run. He's a leader. The quarterback situation was in Joe Burrow's favor as they had lost two quarterbacks to transfer and Miles Brennan was not quite ready. Burrow, already armed with his undergraduate degree and a rifle arm that no one except those in the stands of Athens High School had seen, earned the starting quarterback job. Going into the 2018 season, LSU was picked to finish fifth in their division, but Joe Burrow gave the team a spark. He became the first LSU quarterback to gain 3,000 yards in a season since Jamarcus Russell. All of a sudden, at the end of December, the Tigers were transformed to a top 10 team and earned a spot in the coveted New Year's Six Bowl games. With an offensive line that was torn to shreds, Joe Burrow took 35 sacks, yet never missed a start that redshirt junior season in Baton Rouge. Against six top 20 defenses, see, I told you the SEC was tough, Burrow went 4-2 and two with three victories by 16 points or more. That fourth one was a comeback against number seven ranked Auburn, where LSU was down 21 to 13 in the middle of the fourth quarter. In five minutes, Burrow drove 52 yards in 14 plays, with LSU completing the upset. Against Texas A&M, he never got gassed in the seven overtime, almost five hour long loss. But it was in the Fiesta Bowl against UCF, a team who had been calling themselves national champions, that Joe Burrow really turned heads. After taking a monster hit and with his team down by 11 points, like the Incredible Hulk, Joe Burrow rose with vengeance throwing for nearly 400 yards and four touchdowns as his number 11 ranked Tigers beat Central Florida 40 to 32. Joe Burrow's post-game remarks were, I didn't really think about the hit too much after I got up. Hurt for a second and I got right up and went on to the next play. In 2019, Joe Burrow did not lose in his LSU uniform while shattering records along the way. He passed for 5,671 yards and 60 touchdowns, and the Tigers marched all the way to the national championship while Burrow made fellow SEC foes look like peewee football teams, all while he waltzed his way to the Heisman Trophy, crushing Jalen Hurts in the vote. 
He would then torch the number one ranked team in the country, Alabama, for nearly 400 yards and three touchdowns in what some consider a game of the century. During LSU's college football playoff 63-28 semifinal victory over OU, Burrow tossed for seven touchdowns on 493 passing yards and scored a rushing touchdown all in the first half. After a short 35 minutes, he was finished taken out to rest, and the announcers declared that they had witnessed one of the greatest performances in the history of college football. The cherry on top of his college career was the national championship victory over Clemson, where he would duel Trevor Lawrence and absolutely crush him, throwing six touchdowns, five of them being passing touchdowns, on 463 yards and was named the offensive MVP. His 60 passing touchdowns in 2019 broke the single season an FBS record. Joe Burrow's name was etched on all of the college football awards. The Maxwell Award, AP National Player of the Year, Walter Camp Award, Davey O'Brien Award, and the Unitas Golden Arm Award, not to mention the Manning Award. But it wasn't any of those record-breaking games that created Burrow fans. It was his Heisman speech, when instead of talking about himself or his team, he put a spotlight on 740 the region of Ohio he grew up, telling the world about the food insecurity there. It's a very, very impoverished area and the, the, the poverty rate is almost two times the, the national average and there's so many people there that, that don't have a lot and I'm up here for all those, all those kids in Athens and in Athens County that you know, go home to not a lot of food on the table hungry after school you guys can be up here too now not only was burrow a football hero but he was a role model to kids and a hope for his community all while he pulled heartstrings as those who heard his speech were motivated to donate nearly a half a million dollars to the athens county food bank Leading into April 2020, it seemed as if things might finally work out for those rooting for the orange and black. The Cincinnati Bengals had the number one overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, and they would have a hometown boy, Joe Burrow, attempting to do what no other Bengals quarterback, even Boomer Esiason, could do, which is possibly win them a Super Bowl. Prior to the NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins offered Cincinnati their three first-round picks for Joe Burrow, which included a number five pick slot, but the Bengals hung up on them before they could finish their offer. Ironically, this would be one of the many moments that would cause Brian Flores to get fired, according to the owner of the Miami Dolphins, but it was fate that Joe Burrow could be the savior to rescue the city of Cincinnati and Bengals fans everywhere from constantly living in a purgatory of football mediocrity. The change for the Bengals would not happen right away, as there would be a hit in 2020 that Joe Burrow would not instantly get up from. That summer, Joe Burrow inked his name to a $36.1 million contract, moved out of his parents' basement, and was favored to win the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year award. In his first game, he threw for less than 200 yards with an interception and a three-point loss to the Chargers. The next game was a loss to the Cleveland Browns, but in that game, he broke the NFL record for pass completions for a rookie, going 37 of 61 with three touchdowns. Then he threw for 300 or more yards in three straight games, becoming the first rookie quarterback to complete such a feat. In week seven, he broke the 400 passing yard mark, yet the Bengals, who seemed to always struggle to put it all together, could not get more wins than losses. Then in week 11 against the Washington football team, Burrow was hit while attempting to complete a pass. It was an injury that completely obliterated his knee, tearing his ACL, MCL while causing damage to the PCL and the meniscus. With six weeks left in his rookie season, Joe Burrow was out with the hope for the Bengals' bright future being snuffed out for now. At the start of the 2021 season, the Cincinnati Bengals had 150 to 1 odds to win the Super Bowl. If you placed a $100 bet on the Cincinnati Bengals to win it all just before the NFL kicked off in September, and if they end up pulling off the feet against the Rams, then you would collect a cool 20,000. Those odds makers didn't look at the roster very close. 
The Bengals now had two weapons, a healed and even more mature Joe Burrow and Joe Burrow's old buddy from college, Jamar Chase, who the Bengals had selected fifth overall in the 2021 NFL Draft, although it was a controversial decision at that. The argument being that the Cincinnati Bengals had a tremendous wide receiver core with T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd already. But Joe Burrow's rookie season was literally ended as a result of him getting sacked way too much. And there was a transcendent offensive lineman available at the number five spot in Panay Sewell. Joe Burrow advocated for Jamar Chase, which the Bengals would happily oblige, and subsequently, although Joe Burrow threw for 34 touchdowns and had a 70% completion percentage and over 4,600 passing yards, he also got sacked 51 times this year. At the start of this season, Joe Burrow kept a chessboard by his locker. It would remain there all year. It was a game he took up in elementary school when it was too cold to go outside for recess. Just a hobby to Joe, but to outsiders, the board was a subtle reminder that he was a different kind of quarterback. A cerebral one. In week one, Joe Burrow, armed with a knee brace and a brighter and whiter smile, led his team to a 27-24 overtime victory against the Minnesota Vikings. Former NFL quarterback Phil Simms was quoted saying at the beginning of the season that I think he's throwing the football better this year than he threw it last year. A good thrower, accurate, just a great feel for the game, knows how to move in the pocket better athletically than we all probably think he is, and a sneaky, really good thrower of the ball. He knows how to play the game, and he's been taught very well. And Zach Taylor and Brian Callahan have done a great job with Cincinnati's offense. A narrow loss to the Chicago Bears in week two was pretty ugly. By the time that the bye week rolled around, it looked as if the Cincinnati Bengals were still, well, the Bengals, with a just above average five and four record and losing their luster after dropping a game to the lowly New York Jets and being blown out by the Cleveland Browns. Then like a classic game of chess, Joe Burrow chipped away, knocking NFL pawn after pawn down in silence. In week 16, he threw for a career high 525 passing yards with four touchdowns and no interceptions in a 41 to 21 win over the Baltimore Ravens. Joe Burrow broke Boomer Esiason's franchise record for most passing yards in that game, and the win was the Bengals' ninth of the year. Burrow won AFC Player of the Week and all of a sudden, the Queen City sat first place in the AFC North. In Week 17, Joe Burrow again threw for 446 yards and four touchdowns, beating the red-hot Kansas City Chiefs. Winning the AFC North and Chad Ochocinco didn't have to give up McDonald's. The Bengals became the only NFL team besides Tampa Bay to have three players over 800 receiving yards. Jamar Chase with 1,455, T. Higgins with 1,091, and Tyler Boyd with 828. Joe Burrow set franchise records for passing yards with 4,616, touchdowns with 34, and a passer rating of 108.3. For the first time since 2015, the Cincinnati Bengals were in the playoffs. In the wildcard game against the Las Vegas Raiders, they snapped their 31-season playoff losing streak. Burrow threw for 246 yards and two touchdowns in the 26-19 win. When Joe Burrow identified a zone coverage that Raiders defensive coordinator Gus Bradley rarely used, he was like a chess master, finding the defense's weak link and perfectly placing a 29-yard completion to tight end CJ Uzuma. In the division round, Joe Burrow had a road test against the Tennessee Titans, who were the number one seed. It was ugly. He was hit 13 times and sacked nine times in the contest, but each time he got back up again while completing 28 of 37 passes for 38 yards as his team marched on to a 19 to 16 victory that was won via a 52 yard Evan McPherson walk-off field goal. At one point in the game, Joe Burrow's headset went out and he was forced to call his own plays. No, I've never been in that position before. That was kind of exciting for me. Um, and Zach always kind of jokes that, hey, you know, don't, don't pretend like the headset goes out so you can call your own plays. But, you know, on Sunday or Saturday, you know, the headset did go out and so I had to call three or four plays on my own. And you know, all, all of them worked. So that, was, that was fun. 
After the win against the Tennessee Titans, Joe Burrow took on a new persona of a confident leader, one wise beyond his years by telling the media that he was over the why not us. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I, I talked to him last night about you know, how I don't really like that because like I said, I'm tired of the underdog narrative. We're a really good team that has worked really hard to get to this point and you know, we make plays. Whether it's defense, offense, or special teams, we go out there and, and get it done. Then for the AFC Championship, Joe Burrow turned into a Burrow who was cold as ice as he entered one of the NFL's most menacing atmospheres. The 25-year-old signal caller dressed in a black turtleneck that showed off his custom ice diamond necklace that he confirmed after the game was indeed the real deal. They're definitely real. I think <laughs> I make too much money to have fake ones, so you know these are real. <laughs> Burrow also wore Neo-like sunglasses and a fuzzy, probably very expensive coat as he strolled very cool, very calm, and very collected into Arrowhead Stadium. He was on a mission to lead his team, still considered the underdogs, to the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow had completed over 73% of his passes in the first two playoff games for 592 passing yards, two touchdowns, and just one interception. Yet he would have to be much better against the Kansas City Chiefs defense, the defense that was now at full strength. By midway through the second quarter, it looked as if Joe Burrow's magical season was coming to an end as the Cincinnati Bengals were down 21-3. Yet no one had called checkmate just yet. Joe Burrow, unfazed by the Kansas City Chiefs pass rush and not rattled by the roar of the Chiefs kingdom, led his team to score 18 points. It was 18 points unanswered by Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and Travis Kelsey, and all of a sudden Joe Burrow had put a freeze on Arrowhead so cold that Jackson Mahomes didn't even dare post a TikTok by the conclusion of the game. The stadium became quieter than it had been in some time as the AFC Championship was tied 21 in the third quarter and Evan McPherson field goal gave the Cincinnati Bengals the lead. Then in the final seconds, which the Chiefs had proved all they need is 13 seconds, this time Patrick Mahomes did not find the end zone, but the Chiefs instead had to settle for a field goal, forcing overtime. The Chiefs won the coin flip in overtime for the second week in a row, and Joe Burrow had to first calculate his future moves from the sidelines. The Bengals defense played with confidence as Von Bell intercepted Patrick Mahomes. It was Burrow time and he did his job. Starting at his own 45 yard line, he advanced his team close enough for Evan McPherson to nail a 31 yard game winner. The Cincinnati Bengals were headed to the Super Bowl for the first time since 1988. Just like 2019, Joe Burrow was carried off the field and celebrated with a cigar once again this time in the tight confines of the Chiefs visiting team locker. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank all the people that helped me throughout my entire process. Physical therapists, Nick and Aaron, my trainer Dak, uh, my family obviously helped me after surgery. It was tough getting around the house. Uh, and then, you know, my teammates, I obviously wouldn't be here without them. Coaches, organization, everybody. So thanks everybody so much. Worked really hard to get here. Excited for this weekend.